So what we a lot of a lot of people in the Tesla community have been talking about this difference between whether the bots need to be set up to do specific tasks so that they would be ready to go right now. I mean, literally. Mm -hmm. Most people yeah. in the community think that the Optimus and several of the other bots could go out and do very specific tasks right now, or mm -hmm. whether they need to be more set up for general, like kind of a general understanding of their environment, how to work with humans, uh mm -hmm. not get into trouble not make mistakes and be able to be used for multiple tasks and some mm -hmm. people think that at least a couple of these uh, that optimus in particular but a couple of the other companies might be trying harder to get to this kind of a general use case before they really go into selling them is that kind of where you're going with this today um we can discuss some of those aspects of it um i hadn't um prepared slides may need to, to revisit this particular topic. I have some comments about that because um there are there are you know those industrial robots with just the big arm. There's um the Roombas and those kind of things, which they had a cap of like okay, we got 50 million of them that that um 15 million that people bought per year globally. Um so there's a lot of these narrow niche bots. So there's a clearly a um a utility to them but then you can cap out and not have the full uh impact that you're going for that if you have the big prize of and in the interviews with the um, factory ai uh robot company who I, i've spoken to the cto and ceo before when they were at d wave and i speak both of some other conferences but not recently um i've also talked to their um you know, the person who funded them, that kind of stuff. So I know a lot about what they're doing and their goals, but on the videos that they just had with Herbert and with um, 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 John Gibb, um, Dr. Nodal, our right. co-author on the book, um, um, the CTO, um, and then Gildert was talking about how they want to replace all labor and right. to go at, and they, and they have a plan towards doing that. Right. So, so there's a question of like this balance in the near term versus the long term, and right. and and how how to get there. Some of the uh, things I've been discussing are what is um, too small, what is um, maybe too big, and what's the just right of, of what do you want to achieve in three to five years, right? what would be something that would really move the needle and what does moving the needle mean? Uh, I think that's the kind of thing I want to try and uh, get at. Um, it's, it's take more than one video. It's, 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 it's a deep topic. Okay. All right. Well, if you happen to be a big fan of the cyber truck, you might also be interested in this super fun cyber truck, refrigerator magnet and bottle opener. It is made out of super thick stainless steel, just like the Cybertruck. And it has this giant magnet on the back, so it's going to hold a lot of stuff on your refrigerator. It's an amazing gift, and it comes in that great gift box that you saw before uh, that uses a magnet opener, just almost like an Apple box, you know, like when you get Apple products. You can buy it on Amazon for $29.95, or you can buy it direct from me by sending $25 to paypal.me forward slash Randy Kirk, all in lowercase letters. Please indicate whether you want the stainless steel look, or maybe you'd like to have this very clever camo version. And then if you're not in the US, please add $20 for freight. If you'd like more than one, Please check the information below to get pricing, as well as all that information I just told you will be repeated in the information below. So once again, think about joining the channel, getting the up-to-date Tesla news every single day. I think you'll be glad you did.